The year is 2025. The sky is no longer safe for humans. Missiles see farther, radars react faster, and no pilot can survive inside that kill zone for long. So the US built something non-human. This is Fury, the AI strike jet born from NGAD. Pair it with an F-47 or F-35, and one pilot now commands the power of an entire squadron. Breaking news, the YFQ-44A, nicknamed Fury, just completed its first semi-autonomous flight on October 31st, 2025. No human hand on the stick, yet it flew, navigated, and executed its mission perfectly. The age of human-machine squadrons has officially begun. It is built by Anduril Industries, led by Palmer Lucky, the same mind who invented the Oculus Rift. He's not chasing VR dreams anymore. He's building war machines that think for themselves. Anduril's co-founder Palmer Lucky warns, our real rivals aren't other contractors. They're foreign powers racing to fill the sky with autonomous weapon systems. Move faster, or they'll outnumber and outsmart us. And he's right. China and Russia are already deploying their own robotic army. China, FH-97 stealth wingmen, swarm and jam defenses. GJ-11 Sharpsword, a ghost bomber that strikes deep, unseen. Darksword, hypersonic AI jet that hits before radars can even react. Russia, S-70 Hunter, a heavy stealth UCAV built to hunt pilots. This isn't the future, it's now. Why Fury is different. Fury is not a camera drone, it's a thinking weapon. Modular, swap weapons, jammers, or sensors like Lego bricks. Stealth-shaped, built to disappear in radar. Long range, can fly 2,000 miles without refueling. Long enough for Pacific combat. Software first, its brain, Lattice, gets instant upgrades like a smartphone. Sensors on board act like a human nervous system. Eyes, ears, reflexes, and coordination fused into one. Electro-optical and infrared sensors seize heat. Radar maps the ground through clouds. SIGINT listens for enemy radio chatter. Jammers blind radars. Lasers mark targets. And the lattice network links all furies into one hive mind. Together, they see, decide, and strike in milliseconds. But how does this team of highly autonomous jets actually perform under fire? How does Fury use its Swiss army knife of sensors to break the most dangerous defenses in the world? We're talking about A2AD, Anti-Access Area Denial Zone, the enemy's bubble of death. America's peer adversaries, Russia and China, have developed advanced A2AD capabilities. It's a layered network of radars, surface-to-air missiles, ships, and electronic warfare that makes contested airspace lethal. If you fly a multi-million dollar fighter into that bubble, you risk losing both plane and pilot. Fury exists to break that math. Now, let's walk through an imaginary, yet realistic, battle scenario. The Taiwan Conflict with China. Taiwan Strait, night. Dark ocean below, thick clouds above. Somewhere across the strait, a Chinese mobile surface-to-air missile launcher hides in the jungle, part of the A2AD no-go zone that keeps enemy jets out. An NGAD F-47 leads the mission. A few hundred miles ahead, four Furies fly low and silent, each one hunting a different piece of the kill chain. Fury Alpha sweeps the coast with its electro-optical and infrared camera, searching for heat signatures, engines, generators, anything warm that shouldn't be there. Suddenly, it spots a strange hot patch moving between trees, a vehicle with a live radar truck attached. Fury Bravo tunes in with passive SIGINT, quietly listening for radio waves. It catches the radar frequency from that same area, confirming it's an active surface-to-air missile system powering up. Fury Charlie goes to work next. It fires a tight electronic warfare pulse, a kind of invisible static blast that scrambles the radar's tracking beam. Now the enemy's radar can't lock on to anything in the sky. Fury Delta climbs higher, activates its laser designator, and paints the target, marking it for precision strike. All the sensor data, the heat from Alpha, the radio signal from Bravo, the radar jam from Charlie, and the coordinates from Delta flow into Lattice, 
Anduril's digital combat brain housed inside every fury. Lattice fuses everything into one live 3D battle map, analyzes patterns, and instantly recognizes what's happening. A strike plan flashes to the NGAD pilot. He reviews it and gives the go. Option A, the NGAD launches a standoff missile. Option B, Fury Delta drops a smart bomb from its internal bay. Seconds later, target destroyed. The radar sight goes dark. The bubble of death cracks open, without risking a single pilot inside that lethal zone. This is not theoretical. It started a decade ago with DARPA's 2014 Air Dominance Study. Back then, DARPA saw what was coming, skies filled with radars, jammers, and missiles. Sending a human pilot in would soon be self-destruction. So they asked, what if air power was a team, not a jet? Their answer became NGAD, the crewed command fighter, and CCA, the collaborative combat aircraft the loyal wingmen like Fury, a quarterback, and his robotic team. The Air Force took DARPA's idea and built a plan. DARPA's research and testing proved the family of systems idea in labs, simulations, and small prototypes. U.S. Air Force adopted the concept and initiated programs to build the 6th generation NGAD fighter and the wingmen. Prototype competitions were organized. Companies build test jets and autonomy software to show they can perform. Flight testing and integration started. Prototypes fly with crewed fighters to prove teamwork in real conditions. Production decision and scale-up are planned after U.S. Air Force picks winners. Next phase will include funding contract winners and eventually buying fleets from them. Where we stand now. On April 24, 2024, the Air Force advanced Anduril and General Atomics into the CCA Increment 1 phase. Anduril's Fury completed a semi-autonomous first flight on October 31, 2025. Anduril says Fury went from design to first flight in 556 days, blazing fast for a combat jet. The Air Force plans a production decision around fiscal year 2026 to pick who builds the first CCAs at scale. How Anduril moved fast? Plain reasons. Digital engineering slash MBSE build a detailed digital twin and test in software before cutting metal. Commercial parts use off-the-shelf engines and simple landing gear so parts are easy to get. Modular design. Swap sensors and weapons quickly, like Lego. Factory focus. Anduril is building Arsenal 1, but approximately 5 million square foot plant in Ohio to go from prototype to production. Initial line work planned around mid-2026. Money and scale. The Air Force is spending real billions on NGAD and CCA over multiple years. Early public budget asks included roughly $1.7 billion for initial CCA work and larger multi-year sums in planning documents. Officials visualize buying hundreds of fighters backed by thousands of CCAs as the force grows. Next steps the program must prove. Multi-ship missions that show CCAs can work together and with NGAD. Human on the loop control. Pilots always approve lethal strikes while machines act fast. Production awards in fiscal year 2026 and initial deliveries from factories like Arsenal 1. Who's racing? Anduril versus General Atomics headlines the contest. General Atomics brings UAV experience. Anduril brings software speed, digital engineering, and a factory first model. The edge will go to whoever updates software fastest, fits new sensors quickest, and builds at scale. Bottom line, DARPA found the sky could become a minefield. The U.S. answered with a team, a human quarterback plus smart, replaceable wingmen. Fury is the first big proof that this team can fly. If America can design, test, and field these systems faster than rivals can counter them, speed and numbers become the weapon. Final question. Should a human always approve a strike, or should a machine be allowed to decide in the split second? Type human or machine in the comments.
If you want more breakdowns like this, hit subscribe and share this video with a friend who loves tech and air power.